As adults, we think so much about what we need to teach youth in order for them to be successful. However, I think that we've reached a time in evolution where it may be around what youth need to teach us in order for us to be successful. Now, this may sound slightly disruptive, but I think there are three areas where we can learn from youth, and in particular, Generation Z, in order to thrive in the new world of work. The areas I'm thinking of are within one, gaining autonomy, two, making learning a living, and three, leading with technology. Around the first area, which will be around gaining autonomy, I'd like to start with some research. So did you know that actually seven out of 10 40-year-olds in Sweden have stated that they are bored and unmotivated at work? Now, there may be multiple reasons behind this, but the fact still remains that 70% is a very high number. And at the same time, the stress levels in the Western world have never been this high. To manage life, we literally read books from Ariana Huffington remembering how to sleep. We study articles, YouTubes, TED Talks, everything we can match in order to see how we can optimize nutrition and exercise to get the most out of this machinery we call the body in order to deliver as much as we can to working life. It doesn't really make sense. So discussing this and many other work-related topics with my teenagers at home, their input to me was quite clear. They said, you know, Mom, your generation have done a great job for us. You've made it equally possible for men and women to have a great career, a great development, to be equally independent, to be home as parents if we want to. But for our generation, we would like to have a little bit more autonomy in life, a little bit more flexibility. And actually, this is not surprisingly, but exactly what we've seen in recent studies done in Stockholm School of Economics, where 50% of the graduates are saying the same. They would like to have their own businesses because they would like to have a little bit more autonomy in life. With this, I think that maybe we may be, as adults, the last generation working as we do today. It's not like our kids are looking at us and thinking, wow, my mom, she seems so relaxed. She's so in the moment, so chill. <laughs> they're not, they're not. And at the same time, the world of work is changing so rapidly. The gig economy with the independent worker who will charge his or her expertise by the hour, the contract or the project, it's already here. So what I think we can learn from youth is their determination on regaining autonomy of life. And if you might be one of those adults who actually would benefit from slightly more inspiration at work, slightly more, less stress levels, and maybe would like to regain a bit of that autonomy in life. There is really one question that you need to be able to master. And that is, what would be your unique skill set that you would be inspired by, able to compete with and charge highly for in the market of the independent worker? Now, talking of skill sets, that's taken me quite well into the second area where I think we can learn from youth, which is around making learning a living. So I think there's a fundamental difference to how my generation 30 years ago were taught to learn and how children today are brought into learning. 96% of five-year-olds today in Sweden have access to some kind of iPad or tablet. Now, this means for these children growing up, La to a large extent, games are free to use, free to download, and actually to no cost at all. Which is a very big difference to my generation. We had to walk over to a shop. You actually pick out one game, sometimes very expensive, and that game needed to be worthy of buying from the adult that was joining you for probably paying. 
The other significant difference is that when I grew up, I was absolutely dependent on another adult sitting down with me and teaching me how this game works. You know, the rules, the social interaction, how to develop. Well, as for kids today growing up, games are to a large extent highly interactive. Kids growing up in Generation Z are taught from the beginning to be both the student and the teacher to the same game. I would even argue that children today are not taught to learn anymore. They understand deeply that they need to own learning. It's on their own accountability in order to progress with anything in life. And you know, this just continues as they grow older. If I look to our oldest daughter, who's in her 20s now, also born in the Generation Z though, between 1995 and 2010, her learning curve to snowboarding, and it started weeks in advance of us even hitting the mountains. She was literally like standing on her bed, fully geared up, boots, board, trying the iPad, you know, f chatting with an instructor, anything to get s mentally prepared, physically prepared. So when we hit the slopes a few weeks later, the only thing that she hadn't practiced was literally with snow beneath her board. And I think that we as adults, we need to learn from youth in order to progress with everyday and continuous learning, in order to stay relevant in the market. On the topic of continuous learning, we need to see it as a path in life that follows all the time, rather than an on-off experience, where we would study at university at the 2025 and maybe take an MBA at 4045. We need to see learning as a continuous path in life. An example would be, if you would be in marketing and you would have missed continuous learning the last couple of years, you probably would have missed digital marketing. Now, digital marketing was one of the most searched for skills in 2016 on LinkedIn last year. 38% of all of our members in Sweden that had digital marketing on their profile actually changed jobs last year. And what's the underlining message here is that the skills that are most in demand today, they weren't even invented seven, eight years ago. And the skills that will be most in demand in seven, eight years from now, they probably aren't even invented yet. So the only way to ensure that you are relevant is to adopt an everyday learning process Make it your executive decision about your future. Now, the easiest way I know to motivate myself to putting off that time into everyday learning is actually by envisioning myself as an individual contributor, as an independent worker is the best way. So what would you need to learn today, tomorrow, and in three years' time in order to stay relevant to the company paying your bills? But then I would also challenge all of you that actually are fixed-term employees to do the same. So what would you need to learn in order to stay relevant to the company or the manager approving your salary every month, both today, tomorrow, and in three years' time? Because we need to remember that out there, the competition in just a few years' time will be Generation Z, who will be born, a generation that was born with an iPad at hand, who will be determined to regain autonomy of life but where learning for them is just second to nature. Now, learning will be a big part of the new world of work. Another big part will be technology. Now, this will take me very well into the third part, where I think we can learn from youth, which is around leading with technology. So what really is the new world of work? Well, we think, we predict that probably millions and millions of jobs over the globe will be changed, transformed. Some will even be displaced. We think that technology will be a big part of this world. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics. It will be there either we like it or not. And I think what we can learn from youth is their way of naturally embracing technology and presuming that it was just there to make us better. I'll give you an example of, from my family again, of my son. So we have four children, we have one son. He's 10 years old, 
He loves maths. He loves science. He's going to be the next great football player of this world. He really hates essay writing. Like his hand cramps. He, um, he, he doesn't like it. He doesn't want to put time into it. He's been told from a very early age that his handwriting needs to improve. And then very recently, I was at a, a parent-teacher meeting, and his teachers were absolutely overwhelmed how he had transformed over summer. He's now become this amazing essay writer and taking social study notes that they could share in classroom. And they were looking to me and my husband saying, what have you done to transform him this way? And we, we uh, were thinking, oh my God, really? Really? So obviously we went home to him and we asked, what have you done? How did you solve this? And what he had done was that he had used his iPhone and he had dictated the essays that he wanted to write. So absolutely nothing wrong with the creativity or the fantasy, but he genuinely did not like the handwriting. So he had dictated the essays, dictated his social study notes. He then transferred into his computer, he edited it, and emailed to his teacher. And voila, in his world, he had reduced admin, he had gained speed, and he had been able to save time to whatever he needed to do in football. Now, what's the learning in this? And what is it, I think, that we as adults can learn to adopt? Well, I think what he did was that he used the most basic of technologies to turn a disadvantage into an advantage. He also turned a weakness into a strength by just presuming that technology was made for him to improve. So jobs will change, and technology will be a part of this world, either we are ready for it or not. The more we inhibit it, the more we fear technology, the more reactive will we become. But I also think the more we can think about our own jobs and think, what could technology do for me? How can I turn a weakness into a strength? By just presuming that technology was there for us to develop. So to summarize, I think there are three areas where we can learn from Generation Z. The first is within gaining autonomy. And the key question there that we need to be able to answer is, what would be that skill set that you would be inspired by, but also able to compete with and charge highly for in the new world of work? The second area is that we need to start to see learning as a continuous process in life, just like youth do. And the easiest way to do this is by envisioning yourself as an independent worker. What do you need to learn today, tomorrow, and in three years' time in order to stay relevant to the company or the manager approving your bills or salary? The third area is within leading with technology. So jobs will change. Technology will be a part of this world, either we are ready for it or not. What are the disadvantages or weaknesses that you can turn into strengths if you start to presume that technology was just there to make you better? Because I think the key thing to remember in this is that the new world of work is changing. And Generation Z will be soon stepping out fully into the new market. And they will be so focused on regaining autonomy in life. They are born from the age of an iPad, where learning is just second to nature. And they will be presuming from start that technology was only there to make them individually the next rock star of their generation. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.